is she guys i sometimes i wonder is she gonna end up in prison like not for tax evasion or anything like that she's already going there for but like like she's gonna flip out one day she's gonna absolutely flip her non-existent wig and she's gonna end up going to prison like this is the type of person that you can picture in prison like she sat there and ate an entire whole fish while it stared at her and she dug into the into the skull to get the cheek meat and said she liked that and just casually talked about going to see some resident dead evil whatever horror film she's excited to go see that and it's going to be fun to do a drive around video to activate her monetization like this is someone that should be in prison hello and welcome back to are you serious so uh looks like the hijab is getting a little bit frayed getting a little bit frayed here probably not the best quality um the abaya is a little tight i would say more than a little tight um, you're in your own home, so you don't actually have to wear anything on underneath that because um, you're at home and you're appropriately dressed for the camera according to how you believe you should be dressed. So you wouldn't need to, you shouldn't have like a long sleeve shirt on underneath there. So if this is um, on your skin, that's very, very tight. And if it were me, and it's not, but if it were me, and if my all my clothes were fitting this tightly, I wouldn't be having this, the Pepsi, I wouldn't be having the bread. Um, I don't know what's in here, but I would probably have the salad, <laughs> this little side salad. And I don't know if this is a soup, maybe like a third of the soup. And then put the rest in the fridge for for another meal. But I'm sure every drop will be gone by the end of this video, which is 26 minutes long. So let's get into it. She's got a big smile, waving. She's got some pink uh, lip gloss that looks very nice and uh, just some minimal black eyeliner. Okay, let's, uh, let's watch. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So as you can see here, I'm sat halfway under my table and here we go. <laughs> So, um, I'm going to eat one of my favorite meals here, um, healthy meal minus the, uh, Pepsi, but whatever. And, uh, this is one of my- Well, it's not whatever. Why don't, I mean, they have diet Pepsi or what they call it. They're probably Pepsi light or zero sugar Pepsi. Why not just get that? Why did you have to order a regular Pepsi? If you're going, if you feel that you're eating a healthy meal, why not just- I mean, how many calories is in this can? This is bigger than a 12 ounce soda. My favorite, favorite meals here so far, like I said, um, it's from this fish place, fish restaurants. Well, there's several fish restaurants that are like this. So um, I'm so hungry, I need to dig in, so. Well, yeah, because everybody eats fish in Kuwait. Everybody cooks fish here, Flop, it's Kuwait. Bismillah. Let's eat. So Bismillah is, uh, is just, and I'm just, whether you've heard me say it or not, I'm just going to keep translating because there are always going to be new people joining who haven't heard my past videos or, you know, and nobody expects you to remember what it means after hearing the meaning once or twice. So Bismillah just means in the name of God. Um, typically we say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, which is in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. And we say this before starting anything, um, definitely before a meal is a great time to do it. I say it when I'm leaving the house, just in the name of God, whatever I'm about to do is in the name of God. So, you know, it's, I feel like it kind of puts... I hope, <laughs> inshallah, God willing, I hope it puts some kind of protection on me when I go out the door that um, that I'm going to be safe driving, that I'm going to get to my destination okay, and that everything is going to be, everything's going to go okay. So really before anything you start that, um, that you want some extra assurance, why not do it in the name of God? There's nothing wrong with uh, with saying that. So, but we do say it frequently before a meal, for sure. 
I'm just going to unwrap this food here. I, I hate plastic wrap. <laughs> I hate unwrapping plastic wrap. All right. So we'll get to the good stuff, but here's the side stuff. So they give you um, a little side salad with. See now, for me, this would not be adequate as a side salad. Um, and I don't know if this just like comes with the meal, if it just comes with it, and that's very nice to like have all that stuff on the side. Um, if I were to order a side salad, this would not be a side salad for me. I, I mean, I like salads, so I'd buy, I'd probably get like an entree salad, like this times six. <laughs> um, because this looks like maybe there's a little bit of sauce or something on the tomato. There's probably some dressings on the side here. Um, it's very, you don't really see iceberg lettuce so much. Um, I did see it in Egypt from time to time, but it was never any decent quality that I would even consider buying it. It's almost like, yeah, we offer it <laughs> if you're really going to have it. But I mean, it's like wilted. It's a, there's small little heads of lettuce. They're not, you know, when you're picking a head of, um, iceberg, if you buy it at the grocery store, you want like a firm head they're never you pick it up and it's like squish not not that it's like going bad there's just like no um there's no substance to it it's like a couple of leaves wrapped up you know so um usually you get watercress and these leaves it might looks like i don't know what this is maybe spinach or something could be so lemon lime cucumber some greens some onion I'm just going to take the onion out because I will not be eating that. Raw onions are a no for me. Thank you. So I'll put that right here. And I like to squeeze the citrus on the vegetables. And let's crack open the Pepsi. All right. So we have the vegetables here. Beauty bite. Everyone eat their veggies. Was that a fly that just went by? All right. So we have the vegetables here. Yep. Beauty bite. Everyone eat their veggies. How does a fly get in the house when everything's closed up? Hmm. Some bread fresh bread oh my god keep this for the bones you might hear people this is absolutely huge what is this we've already got a big stain on the hijab oh my goodness what's that from okay so i mean you know she keeps saying this is like for one person uh, I mean, some restaurants really load you up on a serving because they want you to come back and they feel like you're going to eat some for dinner and you're going to save the rest for tomorrow's lunch. But this is like, this is, I mean, come on. How much rice is this? This is a thick container. It's got to be about two inches, right? Two inches deep, packed with rice. And let me tell you, this is not going to be brown rice. This is not brown rice. This is like basmati, jasmine, or just white rice with some kind of sauce on it. Looks like eggplant. Looks kind of weak. <laughs> weak eggplant. We get this fish. I don't know. I just, I couldn't. I just couldn't. You know, if it's really such like a fish-centric um, place to live, I would think that they know how to fillet a fish you know and this might be like the local quote-unquote traditional way of eating it with the head attached and the tail attached but you know still i need it to be appetizing if i'm going to eat it so i would ask for it to be filleted i don't think that would be an issue i mean they they should even know how to fillet it at the dock let alone at a restaurant so well in the hall you know the deal so i came and gave me his eggplant he doesn't want it He's so cute. Oh. He came and gave it to you from where? Where did he come from? He came and gave it to you. 
she's given herself away. Sometimes I, I mean, obviously they don't live together, right? But sometimes I think that they might live in the same building, just like on different floors or something. Or like if they're in a complex, like he lives in like a nearby building. Yeah. He came and gave her the eggplant. Okay. So this here is tomato sauce. They call it the dacus, tomato garlic sauce. And we have here a huge fish. I don't know what kind it is, but it's like, I think it's fried. <laughs> we have some fried eggplant and some rice. And yeah, as you can see, is it the whole fish. And it's what the hell? Oh my god, what? So she just does this stuff for shock value, right? She must. She must. I gotta get a thumbnail. This is, that's probably gonna be the thumbnail. This is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. She's just picking up a whole fish. Is she going to bite into it from here? Yeah, as you can see, it's a whole fish and it's steaming hot. Actually, I'm going to put the fish here. Okay, so um, here's some tahina. My favorite. Tahina. Tahina. I can't believe she just picked up that whole fish. Like she just like scooped it out of the water and she just like puts it on the side of a styrofoam container like it's nothing. And she's about to like chomp into that. I cannot believe it. I can't believe it. I I know that the food I eat, you know, fish, chicken, beef, halal, that it's, you know, I know that they were living beings. I, I And thanks to God, they gave up, you know, they gave up them themselves to sustain human life, right? But I, I don't know if I need, I just, I don't, uh, it's very unappetizing to me. It is. Right. Everything is my favorite. And some mambuch, which is like, ooh, garlic chili sauce. I'm gonna put that actually, some on the rice. So good, I love it. Tahini on the rice as well. Yeah, she keeps calling it tahini, and Salah keeps um, correcting her tahina. But you know, she'll do it her way, right? No, I'm weird. I don't know if everyone does this, but... No. Oh, that's a good um, pause game, huh? No, not everyone does that. No. No. Tahina, typically, like, you would use, like, the bread to dip in that. Um... I mean, it pretty much comes with everything on the side. But, yeah, I don't know. I Yeah. It's very, it's, um, I believe it's calorically dense. So to just, like, pour it on your rice like that probably isn't a good idea, like, health-wise. People are slamming doors. Like, I can't wait for them to stop slamming their doors. I need to eat. <laughs> Normally, I wait. She needs to eat in silence. <laughs> She cannot eat when there's noise in the hallway. Wow. Wow. Yeah, you can, yep, yeah, she's done. She's done. Um, the culture shock is, is, is here. It's now here. She's no longer on vacation. She's no longer in like fantasy land where she's like, oh, I'm in an exotic foreign land. Like that's over. That's over. Now she's in a culture where there are children running up and down in the hallway in her building, slamming doors. And no one seems to have a problem with it except for her. <laughs> That's culture shock. Like, why isn't anyone controlling their children and telling them to stop? And she's unable to eat because of the noise. She is supremely annoyed. And it's not just at the kids in the hall or the door slamming. 
Yeah, wow. Okay, we're here. We're at Culture Shock. We are here. But I don't know. I don't. Uh, it just feels like people just hang out in the hallway for like no reason. <laughs> no, I swear. Okay. We're getting hangry. So here's a beauty bite of this yummy eggplant. It's one of my favorite things here. Hmm. The bread and the tahina. The rice is so good with the tahina and the tomato dakus and the mabuch. Steaming. Mmm. Mmm. Perfectly seasoned rice. Mmm. Mashallah. Mashallah. There's a tomato with some mabuch on it. So, um,. The mashallah, she continues to use in in a. Sometimes it's kind of correct. Most of the time, it's not correctly used in the right context. Um, she always says it twice in a row for some reason. She must be hearing someone saying that. Um, mashallah is an acknowledging the blessings that God has given to someone else. To someone else. I don't know how, well, how more simply I can say that. Um, if, uh, if, you know, if your friend gets a new car and they want to show it to you and you go outside and you're like, oh, nice car, mashallah. Like, it's acknowledging the blessings that were given to your friend by God to allow them to get this car. Now, again, again, I will repeat this again as many times as I need to. If you don't believe in God, if you um if you don't believe what i believe if you think it's all nonsense i don't care it's fine i'm not trying to convince anyone of anything definitely not preaching to anyone if any of this language turns you off this probably is not the channel for you i'm just i'm just saying don't get yourself unnecessarily worked up if this bothers you it's not meant to provoke anybody it's just to explain what she's saying, how it should be used, in what context in the Muslim religion. But I'm just explaining. Okay? All right. I hope that's clear. Mm. Some greens. Now, if she's complimenting the chef for the way that they're cooking, there's a different saying she could say, but she would say it directly to the person. Um, if she was just saying, this is a great meal, she would thank God for that. This is delicious, alhamdulillah, thanks to God. Thank God for providing me with this delicious food, alhamdulillah. If, um, if the chef, if the person who made the meal handed it to her at the takeout place, um, she could say to the, if it's a guy, tislamadik, or if it's a woman, tislamadiki. It just means bless your hands. Bless your hands that made this food. So saying mashallah is not really, it doesn't fit in this, in this situation. You're not acknowledging the blessings that were given by God to another person. Now, if you were directly complimenting the chef, like if she's sitting here saying, oh, the chef that made this, he is so talented, mashallah, that would be an appropriate use of it. But just to say the food is good, mashallah, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. So I thought I would just eat dinner with you guys. I thought maybe I would do like fish meat. It's like lightly fried. I eat the skin and everything, it's so good. I'm not 
not going to say that this is some like traditional Middle Eastern way of eating fish. I've never seen anyone in my life eat a fish like this anywhere. Never. So <laughs> never. So if you're like, what the heck? I, I, same. I have no idea. I couldn't. I couldn't. I mean, you're looking at the fish in its like original form, picking meat off the side of it. But I mean, she is a sociopath. So I mean, it kind of fits, right? It does. I haven't given up on the gym. Gym memberships are way more pricey here than Canada for women. For women. I thought she already joined the gym. Why is the price a concern now? So I think what everyone was theorizing that it was a free trial membership is probably correct. Because why would she even be mentioning the price now? She's already joined, right? Women only gyms. So I don't want to, I don't want to waste the money, the membership on, you know, and plus, She doesn't want to waste the money on the membership on what? I don't what? Because she's going to be leaving in June. Right? And yes, I joined, I was at um, Gold's Gym when I first got to Egypt. And I mean, here in the States, I go to Planet Fitness, $10 a month. And I was paying $700 every six months at Gold's Gym. And it wasn't like just a women's gym. And it was just a regular gym. Like they didn't have a swimming pool. It was like a regular gold's gym. Like they had classes, but like I never really do classes. So yeah, <laughs> it is expensive. It's considered kind of a luxury to be able to, to have to need to go to a gym to stay fit as opposed to people who do like manual labor type jobs. Like they don't go work as most, you know, in a, in, in a situation like this don't need to go work out after they've spent the entire day in the heat working you know working their bodies like they want to go home have a good sized meal probably something like this would be a nice treat for them and smoke a shisha and go to bed you know but you have people that are just kind of like sitting around nothing to do <laughs> you know eating like this every day you know, like they, it's a luxury to have to go to a gym to stay fit. Of course, it is good for health. Mm. There's something that she's not saying about that. Hmm. Of course, it is good for health. Yeah, she's hiding something. I don't want to waste the membership on, and there was an edit in there too. I don't want to waste the membership on. I'm only going to be here another month and a half. Not even. I think that's what she means. And she doesn't have to join a women's only gym. There are co-ed gyms and they have like women's only hours. So it could be, you know, and they have them like in the morning and some, you know, different times of the day. So it's not like only between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. is women's only. It's like it's it's fair. It gets spread out. And like on different days, it might be like on the evening. So like you'll always be able to find a time to go when it is just women's own, women only. So it doesn't have to be a women's only gym necessarily that she has to join. And you know what? Chantal doesn't even really need a gym. She doesn't. She doesn't need to lift weights. All she needs to do is go for a walk around the block twice a day. Get up in the morning. First thing, before it gets too hot, go for a walk around the block. If you can't make the whole block, go walk around your building one time. And then in the evening when it starts to cool down, do it again. Just that alone would work wonders for her. She doesn't have to go to a gym. Of course it is good for health. So she hasn't given up on the gym, but women's gyms are expensive. <laughs> And it's good for her health. It's like, uh-huh, and? Are you, are you going or not? Do you plan to go or not? Like, what? 
And then she goes back to the food is fresh. I really wanted to order KFC. <laughs> But she didn't because she said Salah came and gave her that fried eggplant that he didn't want. So he ordered from this restaurant and got her this fish, but she wanted to order from KFC. KFC. I mean, regardless of how you feel about the entire fish laying here, I mean, this is much more interesting than some fast food that you could literally get anywhere in the world including down the street from where she lives in Canada. Because I saw an ad. So their ads are effective for barbecue, like for lay, I think it's like Lay's chips flavored chicken. But I'm trying to be good today. <laughs> Another time. She said the ads are effective. <laughs> okay. Lay's chips KFC. Well, they have a KFC flavored Lay's potato chip. But I don't see like where they're putting like Lay's potato chips as a coating on the chicken. I mean, of course, if I search long enough, I'll find it. You flavor know? inspired by iconic restaurant KFC original recipe chicken flavor. If you want this, you can get it on eBay for $13.79 US dollars. So they do have like meat flavored potato chips. Like they had them in Egypt. And I really think because meat is so expensive, I think it's like people crave meat but can't afford it. So like they, but chips are, the like any kind of chips are super, super, super cheap. Like real cheap. Nothing like the States. Like they're kind of overpriced in the States, but. I'm being stabbed by a hijab pin. And you know, I haven't really seen any actual hijab styles. I think she's just kind of like, it's very willy-nilly. Um, yeah, so being stabbed by a pin, I, I, I could see it happening for her because who knows where that pin is. It doesn't, you know, I see one here, but it's like, it's probably one over here. If she's not putting it in correctly, yeah, it'll hit her scalp, you know. If I manage not to get any on myself, I'll be so amazed. Hmm. Oh. So, is it me or she look full? She looks like she's full. I mean, I can't imagine. Maybe she already ate. Because I'm like, I can't imagine this has made her full already. But maybe she already ate, like not too long ago. Because she looks like she's had enough, but she just just keep forcing herself to eat. I wish they gave more tahini. <laughs> this tomato sauce is so good. It's like made with fresh tomatoes and garlic. I mean, she could buy tahina to have in the house, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty common condiment. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know that was bound to happen, getting my hijab dirty. Never fails. Well, a hijab is not meant to be a bib, you know? I love that Salah doesn't like the eggplant. I always get his. Extra for me. He tried to give me his veggie tray too. I'm like, uh-uh, you eat that. <laughs> She talks like veggies are a bad thing. 
he probably was offering her the extra salad, like, here, try to fill up more on this kind of stuff. And then, like, then the fish, and then the rice and bread after that, if you're still feeling hungry, you know? But... So... <laughs> Keep watching that lemon in the corner. I'm going to play it again. Keep watching this lemon. This lemon right here in the corner. Keep watching this. Keep an eye on that. Look at it now. Does it look like everything's like... Like maybe like if she hit it or if she hit the side of the table, like maybe it would fall over, right? But like would it just move by itself? Keep watching this lemon. Mm. Keep an eye on it. Don't let her distract you. was about to happen. Getting my hijab dirty. Never okay. fails. Just keep your eye on the lemon. I love that Salah doesn't like the eggplant. I always get his. Keep watching. Extra for me. He tried to give me his veggie tray too. I'm like, uh uh. Edit. That. Here we go. Watch. <laughs> Look at that. Watch the lemon. Timber! Okay, so, um, all right, so Ramadan is over, right? Ayid Sayid. During the month of Ramadan, all of the, um, you know, I don't really want to get that deeply into it, but, you know, we, uh, as Muslims, we don't believe in ghosts. Um, we, there are, um, we believe that three beings were created by God, three types of beings. Um, angels, the first, humans, people like us, and, uh, there's something called jinn, J-I-N-N. And the, I'm just going to say it right now, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Because when you talk about jinn, I want a little, I want to invoke the name of God. So the, um, the name for one, like a singular jinn is jinni, which sounds like what? Genie, right? A genie in a bottle type of thing, right? And it's like a ethereal spirit. Now, the jinn, are made from a smokeless flame. And jinn are all around us all the time. This is, this is in the Quran. This isn't just like a ghost story or anything. <laughs> this is in the Quran. It's one of the beings that was created by God, a type of being. Now, jinn come in all different forms, types. There are good jinn, there are bad jinn, there are Jinn who believe in God, Jinn who don't believe in God. They're just as varied as people. Okay? Now, the Jinn are invisible. They're invisible. Can't see them. And you're not supposed to have contact with them. You should not be trying to contact them. They, um, they don't try to contact you. They don't try to make themselves known. Um... Unless there's something kind of going on. So, like, there are mischievous jinn, like a, like a child, like a little kid going around, like, you know, just, like, causing trouble. Like, no harm, but just causing trouble, right? Well, like, people, right? Like attracts like. So, Chantal, you know, was talking about her, she talks a little bit later about, you know, the negative, the negative viewers that come to her channel to watch and all the negativity. Well, if she's receiving a lot of, of negativity, it's because she's putting out a lot of negativity, like attracts like, um, just like Amberlynn Reed, just like that. You know, if she chose to just not address the negativity and just focus on her positive viewers who are there to give her positive reinforcement that's who she would attract more of that and the you know so-called haters or negative people would fall back because they're no longer getting her energy so 
people are drawn to certain YouTube channels. So basically your general state of mind, your, your actions, your, the way, just the general way that you live your life are going to attract gin of the same type. Gin are going to be around you no matter what, no matter what. So it's always good for Muslims to play a little bit of Quran in the house from time to time. Um, if I start to feel like a little bit of negative energy and I don't feel like it's coming from me, I'll play some Quran because anything that's negative, it's, it's going to drive them out. It's going to drive them out of the house. So, um, now during, now the reason I bring up Jen is because during the holy month of Ramadan, the, 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 the negativity, the jinn, the negativity, the shaitan from, from coming from Satan, shaitan is Arabic for Satan, are bound. They're bound up, basically like um, shackled, tied up. They can't, during the month of Ramadan, they can't come out and cause trouble. So, <laughs> so this is important. During the month of Ramadan, when you see somebody acting um, in a rude manner, very coarse, um, behaving badly, you can't blame a, a negative jinn that's around you that could be influencing you because they're not around you during the month of Ramadan. They're bound. They're not, a, they're not allowed to roam free during the month of Ramadan. So any bad behavior can't, you can't attribute to negative jinn being around you. It's all you. It's all you. It's all you. And it's all me. You know, whatever I've done this month that hasn't been good, that was all me. I mean, it's all you anyway, but like you really don't have anything to blame it on. There's no like negative vibe. It's just not around. It's all you. So once Ramadan is over, as soon as it's over, the bounds get broken. They're untied. They're allowed to roam free and they've been bound up for a whole month. So at the end of the month of Ramadan, they're like, yes, let us out. Let's go cause mayhem and chaos. And like, you know, you could, you could picture it like a bunch of rebellious teenagers that were being grounded for a month straight. And then it's like, okay, you can go out, <laughs> right? So, you know, the negative gen are going to go back to their negative places where they like to be around these negative people. Um, someone who's very petty or... Um, gluttonous, you know, is going to attract that type of jinn. And they may, where Chantal is especially reactive, she's reactive in general. She doesn't have any kind of peace of mind within herself. She doesn't know how to steady herself and be stable and calm. So jinn are going to have a lot of fun with her if she allows it. They're going to have a lot of fun with her because she will react. If something gets tipped over in her apartment, if there's a noise that she can't explain where it came from, it's to get a reaction from her. And like a child, they're going to be like, tee -hee 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 -hee, when she flips out. So, I mean, this lemon, right? I'm watching this lemon and I'm like, I saw it out of the corner of my eye and I just kept going back and watching it again and again. And I'm like, oh, was it just kind of like teetering there? Like, not really. Did she hit the table? No. She reached down and got a tissue. And then like she put her hand on the table, but she didn't like bump into it or, you know, and it just kind of like rolled off and you saw her face. Like she looked at it and then she looked off. Um, she looked off like, in this direction over here. So when I saw her look in this direction, I'm like, I wonder if she has been experiencing that in the last uh, day or so, last few days, where things are going around and going on in her apartment that are kind of unexplainable to her. And, you know, if she was reading the Quran, if she was studying just even a little bit, she would know what it is. 
and she would know how to how to drive it back to drive it away from her she would know how to do that so Chantal if you're listening um <laughs> that's what you could be dealing with and uh like attracts like so you have these people in the hallway that are bothering you a lot of things are irritating you um you're hangry you know you're in culture shock you're complaining about a lot of different things this is the perfect time for a gin that's been tied up for a month to come and get a reaction out of you so so Yeah. Thought I'd have dinner with you guys. Mm. Let's just go back and watch her face when that happens. Let's see. So. She watched the lemon. She didn't look surprised at all. And then she looked over this way. <laughs> she sees something out of the corner of her eye, I think. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. I thought I'd have dinner with you guys. Mm. Got. Mm. Sorry, I gotta watch out for bones. Um. Nothing really new. Went out today. During the day, made that mistake. We try to go early if we're gonna do something like. That requires daylight for our vlogs on Salon Chantal. But even though we went out early, it became scorching like at like 9 30. But yeah, I'd say it was like 35 degrees Celsius. We have a vlogging channel, Salah and Chantel, and we have an ASMR channel. Everything's in the description. 35 degrees Celsius is 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So yeah, she's feeling the heat. She's, uh, yeah, she's got something in her apartment, most likely. Yeah, she wants to order KFC. He's bringing her a fish. I mean, she's just a pissed off person right now. Shameless plug for our other channels. If you want to see us do things around Kuwait, mostly uh, on that channel. <laughs> if you want to see her do things in Kuwait, like walk around empty shopping malls, empty amusement parks, um, things that look totally desolate as if it was like um, the day after the apocalypse. Yeah, you could watch that channel, sure. Yeah. On this channel, the live streaming and whatnot, eating dinner with you guys. There's like, oh, I love fish. So delicious. But a lot of people I know. I just can't. I, I, I can't. I, is anyone 
else having a problem with this? Like, like, <laughs> like she just picks it up. Oh God, look at this poor thing. Look at this poor thing. Look at this poor fish. My God. Thank you, fish, for giving up your life for this. Good Lord. This poor fish. Look at this. But a lot of Ugh. people I know. Ugh. Hate fish. My mom, for one. Well, she'll eat like filet of sole, maybe. With like a lot of butter and lemon. Because sole is like a, a milder fish. This one is like that too. Mmm. you hear in the background sounds like it sounds like someone's tv is on loud like in the next apartment <clears throat> my table's messy sorry <laughs> i'm just gonna pour it all on top yeah and mix it in like that Um, she's really having a hard time coming up with topics to talk about. Um, I don't know if she loves fish so much. Why not finish the fish before you go into your pound of rice or finish the greens? You know, like there's a lot of fish left. For our ASMR channel, we're probably going to do um, an activation stream. Try to activate the channel. Now, when I first heard this, I was uh, I was doing laundry, and I'm like, activation stream? Now look, I've been on YouTube. I've had a monetized channel for... My first monetized channel was five years ago. So, you know, I've, no, and I've been on YouTube since... I think probably my oldest like account was from 2005 ish maybe 2006 so yeah like you know 15 16 17 years ago right so you know I, I've been around for a while like we never even had live streams before ever <laughs> was no such thing so you know, I, I hear, you know, I hear creators talking about different things and I'm like, what are they talking about? Like, am I out of the loop? Because I don't know. I, I, you know, I don't think so. I don't think so. And so I'll research it and I'll be like, no, they're just talking out of their ass. A lot of them do. So this activation stream thing, I'm like, what's that? <laughs> and I think I figured out what she means. because yeah you know i don't i'm not focusing on negativity and honestly my life is so much better i'm not looking around just focusing on your positive guys you guys have left so many nice positive comments thank you so much but the rest we just ignore but well we know you don't ignore them chantal because they disappear and uh, if you were just ignoring them, they would stay up and, you know, that would be it. You wouldn't respond. They wouldn't be deleted. They would just be there. But that's not the case. I mean, you are actively policing your comments. So um, you are focused on them. Even if you're not directly responding, deleting them is a response. You know, I have seen some comments where it's like, you're doing this for money, you're doing that for money. Of course, you know, so is like every creator on YouTube. <laughs> every YouTuber, or I'd say like, in the high 90s percentile, 
is making content for views and for fun. Some people it's a hobby, but I'm sure they still would like to make extra income. Kind of the same thing here. It's not kind of the same thing with you, Chantal. I mean, this is not a hobby and this is not extra side income. This is it. This is your sole income. Your sole income. <laughs> and I would say, I mean, there are, there definitely are creators who, um, it's interesting because some will say, I'm not monetized. Like it's a virtuous thing, right? Well, you know, whether you are or not, YouTube is running ads on your videos and on your live streams. They are running ads. The only difference with you not being monetized, if that's what you choose for your channel, is that YouTube is taking 100% of the ad revenue instead of 45% and you getting 55%. That's the only difference. And they make several billion dollars a year. So you're just handing over the ad revenue from the ads that they are playing on your non-monetized channel, you're just handing it back to them. So, you know, some people say, oh, I'm not monetized. I'm not monetizing this video. So you're just giving the money back to YouTube because they need it bad. It's a charity now. You're giving it back to them. Also, any money that you do get, even if you aren't, um, you know, even if you're not a high revenue producing channel, any revenue that you do get should be reinvested back into your channel. So, you know, you can, you can buy new equipment, you can get new software, editing, you can do all kinds of things, get a new microphone if your audio isn't good, you know, that kind of thing. And I see not so much in this community really, but I see some, you know, some creators in some communities you know, asking their viewers to give them money for certain things to improve their channel, but they're not monetized. Well, have YouTube give you your share of the ad revenue and go buy this stuff yourself and stop begging <laughs> your viewers for money. It makes no sense to me at all. But so even if you are just doing it for fun, even if you don't care if you're monetized, just do it. Get the AdSense account set up and just start start earning some earning some money you're putting free content on this platform for people to come to youtube to watch and they're running ads anyway get your share i like making content i like streaming for my community It's a lot of fun, most times, <laughs> so, you know, I love these plastic things so, so much, it's so good for easy cleanup after, you just wrap everything in and it's like a little garbage bag, goes right out to the trash, <laughs> and the table's clean. Do you guys eat the eyes? I don't. <laughs> Nothing wrong if you do, but... Um, for those wondering, because I do get comments about like... Do you have forks? Well, yeah, but a lot of people here eat with their hands. So it depends. So yeah, an activation stream, like a long live stream. And then we do have. So what I think she means by an activation stream is that she doesn't have enough um, watch hours to get monetized. So they have enough subscribers um, for YouTube channels. You need at least 1000 subscribers and 4000 hours of watch time where people are watching your videos it's going to add up to 4,000 hours so they have the thousand viewers they have more than that so activation stream sounds like she's just going to do a very long maybe live stream 
maybe a long, long video where she wants people to watch for a long time so she can rack up the watch time hours so she can get the channel monetized. I've never heard it referred to like that, though. It's interesting. A very nice 4K driving room. Typically, um, when you get monetized, typically it's very organic where people are coming back to watch your videos. People like your videos, people are subscribing and people are hanging around to maybe watch more than one of your videos. It's most of the time, it's a very organic process as it should be, because that's how your channel grows. You're putting out good content. You're attracting a good audience. People want more content. They want to keep coming back for more, but just maybe having a live stream of this, like driving around Kuwait for six hours because you want the watch time hours in order to cha-ching flip over the monetization. You know, that's not organic. It's not organic. People are probably going to be there for the live chat, not for watching someone drive around Kuwait. Around Kuwait City. If you want to see what downtown Kuwait looks like. If you like to watch driving around videos, I do personally. <clears throat> so that's fun that's fun <laughs> oh my god <laughs> so that's fun we're gonna do an activation stream on the ASMR channel, which isn't really ASMR. We're gonna drive around and film us um, driving around. And uh, so that's fun. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> fun. Um. Bones are a pain, eh? I'm super well, you know, you could just get it filleted next time. I can't imagine reaching into the gill of a fish and and pulling out meat and eating it. I just, I mean, maybe because I, I've had fish like in, in an aquarium. Maybe that's why. I just can't. I just can't imagine doing that. Super excited to go to the movies. Is that it for the fish? <laughs> There's a new, um, is it, yeah, Evil Dead movie. What is it called, like Evil Dead Rising or something? Uh, I knew there was something. Look at this poor fish looking at us like, help oh, me. She's super excited to go to the movies. Well, just so you know, Chantal's gonna be censored, A, and B, they're gonna be subtitles. Just letting you know. Cheek meat. No. <laughs> Evil Dead. The part in the cheek here is so good. Yeah. She's a sociopath. She's a sociopath. The cheek? And you're excited to go see Resident Dead, whatever? Oh my god. <laughs> God, what is wrong with this person? Is she, guys, I sometimes I wonder, is she going to end up in prison? Like, not for tax evasion or anything, like, that she's already going there for, but, like, like she's going to flip out one day. She's going to absolutely flip her non-existent wig, and she's going to end up going to prison. Like, this is the type of person that you can picture in prison, like, she sat there and ate an entire whole fish while it stared at her and she dug into the into the skull to get the cheek meat and said she liked that and just casually talked about going to see some resident dead evil whatever horror film she's excited to go see that and it's going to be fun to do a drive around video to activate 
her monetization. Like, this is someone that should be in prison. Like the animal, you know, the animal neglect, the animal cruelty. It makes sense watching her with this fish. Like she has no connection with this fish having been at one time a living being created by God swimming around in the ocean, like probably the day before. She doesn't make that connection. Now, like, would, are we eating fish? Most of us are we eating chicken. Yeah. And like, we can acknowledge that we can conceptualize that. But if you bring me a hen on my plate and the beak is attached, and I can see where the eyes were, and there's chicken feet, and I'm just going to start digging in at the chicken breast? No. 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 So she can easily make that separation. She easily. So that's making sense. Not the cheek, it's like the head. I don't know. <laughs> I did a number on that guy. Oh. Yeah, if you're vegan, don't watch my mukbang. <laughs> I remember during my vegan phases, like, I got called out for eating regular nuggets. But I remember also eating vegan nuggets many times, not just the real ones. They're not bad. Like, it depends which brand, but I really like tofu, so for me, it's not a big deal. But yeah, there's a new Evil Dead movie. Evil Dead Rises, Evil Dead Rising, I'm not sure. <clears throat> I don't know what the rice is spiced with, but it's so good. Hmm. I did see a bay leaf. That's what I love about the food here. It's like everything is like, they use so much for like herbs and spices. Mm. So many herbs and spices. getting a feeling you know um of what's going on here i think you know sometimes stuff just kind of comes to you and it could be totally wrong but because i was just thinking okay how long has she been here this time she has about six weeks left so she's been there six weeks already you know approximately and i think that um you know she just got paid and it probably wasn't what she was expecting the paycheck before that probably wasn't what she was expecting and whatever she promised to Salah is just it's not there the money is not there and I think that you know it's half over they have already come to their he's already told her like look obviously I don't know if you lied to me about the money that we could make or that I was going to make but or if something really drastically changed, but you know, your channel is not making the money that you said it, that it does or that it would. So you haven't held up to your, your end of the bargain. So at the end of the 12 weeks, at the end of the 90 days of her tourist visa, like, yeah, well, yeah, you know, we'll do what we can. We'll make the most of it over the last part of it to try to make back some of the money, but you know, like it's not happening so thanks for coming <laughs> thanks for coming to kuwait um you know it's not working out and it's i mean obviously there's so much more than that like she's not following through on what she promised she you know like a gym vlog would have i think created some interest in her channel she's backed off on that it's like everything she told him that she was going to do, it's not happening. It's not happening. So he's just like, Pfft. so what? Do you just want to sit in this apartment that you're renting by yourself and just order takeout? And like, she just watches YouTube all day, probably, you know, and that's it. 
And, you know, that's it. So she's just like, she's just biding her time until it's time to leave, I think. That's what I think is happening. I'm really going to go see that movie. When we have downtime, we love, love to watch movies together. And he, Salah, lucky for me, loves horror movies. So we watched a horror movie the other night called Malignant. I don't know if you know about it. It's like directed by James Wan. So stupid but honestly it was pretty good but kind of dumb <laughs> uh would you like to tell us about it <laughs> it's kind of stupid kind of dumb but maybe i'll read like answer some of the more general comments i get you can leave constructive comments but like and maybe i'll address some of them if it's not like negative or drama. One of the comments I see often enough that people seem to be really legitimately perplexed by is whenever um, we're being filmed by somebody. Like, you know, people will be like, who's doing the filming? Who's that? Who's that? I, I just want to let you know that we have friends and family in our life. <laughs> so, I hope that clears up the mystery for you. <laughs> This uh, is very dismissive of her audience. It's, um, I'm just, I'm very turned off by this. So she's saying, oh, I'll, I'll consider answering some of your comments if they're constructive. And, you know, you're lucky to have people leaving comments on your videos, period. Period. And to have this attitude, like, uh, if they're, good enough, I might consider addressing them. And uh, I don't know what the, what, the, what the issue is with someone else filming. Like, uh, we do know people. It's just, you know, it, it, it. <laughs> like you didn't have anyone in Canada, you know, like you had Pete's, but like you didn't have like friends or anything that would hold the camera or a phone while you were shopping or while you did stuff. So if anyone were to do that, it would be like, whoa, who's filming? And just like here, we only see you with Salah, nobody else. So it's, it's natural to ask, oh, who's filming? And you're like, oh, we do have people in our lives. Like, oh my God, how could you think we don't? Like, cause you're a miserable person and you don't have many people in your life. So who's filming? You know, like I think that's a natural question, which is why so many people are curious why. So the best thing I've ever done for my mental health, as you can see, I'm pretty calm, <laughs> is as of lately, I should say, it's just focusing on us and our content and um, anything except for the negativity and drama that is always prevalent on social media. It's not worth the attention and it's taken a lot of tries to realize that. <laughs> But, never, better late than never. 
All right. Well, let's see how long, you know, she can stick to that. I mean, to me, this doesn't strike me as a calm person sitting here. This is someone who is simmering just below the surface. This is not someone who's calm, laid back, just enjoying a meal, chit-chatting. That is not this. This is someone who is saying she cannot eat while there's people in the hallway and opening and closing doors. <laughs> That's not a calm person. That's not calm. She's simmering. Like oh, it would just take like a couple of events, back to back events for her to blow her top again. I don't know who she thinks she's fooling. Maybe she's fooling herself. Maybe she thinks if she tells herself, she'll eventually believe it. Like, I am a calm person. I'm a rational person. I don't react. And like, that'll just make it true. I think that's what she maybe is what she's doing. But I mean, you're not fooling anybody at all, at all. Okay, one more bite here. Mm. Mashallah, that was so delicious. Alhamdulillah, thank God for this meal. That was so delicious. It starts, Chantal, start saying these things in English so you understand what you're saying. Because to me, you're reminding me of the girl that I approached in Walmart who was wearing niqab, which is everything covered but the eyes, right? Walking up to her, it was just the start of Ramadan and saying, Ramadan Kareem, and her just giving me the blankest stare, like completely dressed like <laughs> niqab is not, um, it's not uh, prescribed in the Holy Quran. This is more of a cultural thing where some people believe they need, to, they need to be covered. Some women believe they need to be covered from head to toe and only their eyes showing. And someone who's dressed like that and doesn't know what I'm saying about Ramadan and Ramadan had just started and she had no recognition whatsoever of what, of what I was saying. And she was American. I could tell like in Walmart. That's what you look like to me right now, Chantal. Mashallah, this was delicious. That, like, <laughs> it just doesn't, uh, you know, one and one don't equal five. That's, that's how you look to me right now. So start saying, if you, if you are, you know, if you're going to continue this when you get back to Canada, I don't know if you will or not. But um, if you are serious, I would, I would recommend just saying these things in English so that you understand what you're saying and that it makes sense to you, you know, like, oh, this meal was delicious. Acknowledging the blessings given by God to someone else. Like what? Unless you're complimenting the chef specifically, the man who made this is very, very talented, mashallah. But it just, you know, just looks like a role play. One of my favorite meals. I'd like to share more of my favorite meals with you guys. I've kind of just been keeping with the Ramadan like schedule. It's hard to get off of it, including the fasting and just eating like one huge meal a day. So I guess that's it um, for this video. We will have a vlog out soon on Salon Chantal. Uh, so stay tuned for that and um, I'll see you guys in the next live stream on this channel as well. So see you later guys. Bye! Yeah, that was terrible. That was absolutely terrible. Yeah, it's just like, okay, I have to put a video up so I have to eat dinner anyway. So let me just get my butt down on the floor. I mean, it was the most, it, there was no conversation. It was boring. I shouldn't even know what type of fish she was eating. No clue what kind of fish that even was. We had to watch the fish's face the whole time. And, uh, you know, uh, 
dull, very, very dull, very dull. It's like, I enjoy making content. No, you don't. No, you don't. I don't see any joy here at all. None. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think of what we just saw. What do you think of my theories? What do you think about, you know, what could be going on in her apartment right now? I mean, just tell me what you think. I'm very interested. If you're not subscribed and you are interested in seeing more of this type of content, please consider subscribing. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button, a thumbs up. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you.